What is up guys, as usual it's Jay, and in this video I'll be covering everything you need to know about the most powerful sword available in The Witcher 3, the Erendite. As usual, I've included headed timestamp codes in the description below, so you can fast forward to the most relevant section. Toward the end of the video, I'll explain in detail the full mechanics of how the Erendite functions. So to get the absolute best out of the sword, make sure to watch all the way to the end. If that sounds good to you, then make sure to smack that thumbs up. Damn good. The Aerondite has a related quest named There Can Be Only One. And to trigger this quest, you'll need to have access to the country of Tucson. Everything mentioned in this guide is solely based in this country, which is exclusive to the Blood and Wine expansion. Within the Gorgon foothills to the west of Tucson, you'll find a fast travel signpost named Shushot Cave. And just to the south of this cave is a lake of azure blue water named Lac Celevi. In the middle of this lake is a small island, and in the middle of the island is a small mysterious and seemingly magical pond where the ragged clothed hermit meditates. The hermit is a powerful but benevolent old man who guards the five chivalric virtues all written on large holy stones. In fact, he's been here since time immemorial and can testify to the extraordinary nature of the lake. He watches over the Aerondite, a sword most wondrous, it can only be lifted by one who truly possesses all five chivalric virtues. Compassion, honor, generosity, valor, and wisdom. To prove your worthiness in each virtue, a number of quests must be completed while meeting specific conditions. All these quests are located in the country of Tucson. This first of five tables shows the eight quests related to proving your compassion. As is the case with all five virtues, only one quest in each table needs to have its conditions met to prove your worth. I've detailed all the related quests just in case you've already completed a number of them without achieving the condition. The first quest is a main quest named the Beast of Toussaint. Located at the Tawny Grounds, the required condition is to spare the Shaomar at the end of the arena combat when given the dialogue option to do so. Master Geralt, do what you must. Finish the deed! Monster's no threat. No need to kill it. A victor may always show mercy. It is his right. Long live Geralt the Merciful! The second quest is named Capture the Castle. Located at Duntyne Castle, the required condition is to help Roderick of Duntyne when given the dialogue option, giving him something to press against his wound to save his life. What? What will become of me? Hmm. Here, press it against the wound. Should staunch the bleeding. I... I thank you. The third quest is named Goodness Gracious Great Balls of Granite. Located in the capital city of Beauclair, the required condition is to allow Hughes de Saber to keep the Reginald statue's appendages when given the dialogue option to do so. Let me keep the stones. I'll pay you. Grant me this, I beg you. They... They've made me young again. Guess I could say I never found Reginald Stones, but you'd have to be careful. Make sure no one figured out you had them. I shall be the epitome of discretion on my honor. So, we a deal. Fine, keep them. The fourth quest is named The Hunger Game. Located at the Corvo Bianco Vineyard, the required condition is to allow Marlene Trastamara to live at Corvo Bianco after freeing her from the curse. All my family's long gone now. The last of my kin perished decades past. I fear I've nowhere to go. This is a big house, big estate. You can stay here. Truly? I could 
Never infringe so on your hospitality. Yet... Yeah. After all I've suffered, the years of starvation, I've but one dream. The fifth quest is named Equine Phantoms. Located at Mont Crane Cemetery, the required condition is to ask Roach to forgive the spirit of Marcello Clarici for flogging his horse, when given the dialogue option to do so. Noble Mayor, forgive me my sin! Could free his spirit, pardoning him on behalf of his horse. But you shouldn't do it if you don't think he deserves forgiveness. The sixth quest is named Big Game Hunter. Located near Shushot Cave, the required condition is to ask Count Beladal about his daughter's well-being after the hunt, when given the dialogue option to do so. Talk to your guards back at the camp. Told me about Clarissa. Sorry to hear about her accident. Thank you. Kind words that mean a great deal to me. The seventh quest is named Mutual of Beauclair's Wild Kingdom. Located at Venin Rocks, the required condition is to not kill Locust the Basilisk when given the option to do so. Basilisk lives for now. We're not gonna kill it. A witcher defending a beast. Ever seen that, lads? You like them peaches? Ah. No scrapping with filth today, it seems. But, but, you made some mention of coin, as I recall. I did indeed. And the word once given? Your share, Witcher. The eighth and final quest related to proving your compassion is named the Tofu Monster. Located in Marcescent Forest, the required condition is to bring the pendant found on the body of Jean-Luc back to Madame de Bourbeau. So, have you... have you found him? Found this. Jean-Luc? Sorry. Really, I am. Lock of hair inside. It's yours, isn't it? Yes. Jean-Luc and I... Well, I'm certain you've pieced it together already. This second table shows the four quests related to proving your honour. As a reminder, only one quest in each table needs to have its conditions met to prove your worth. The first quest is named Father Knows Worst. Located at Albertus Grotto Cave, the required condition is to help Hugo Monart choosing the dialogue option, I'll make sure you're not hurt then defeats the hunters and his brothers, waiting to ambush him outside the cave. <sighs> Don't have much of a choice. Thanks. A thousand thanks. I shall wait here. The second quest is named Goodness Gracious Great Balls of Granite. Located in the capital city, Beauclair, the required condition is to not allow Hughes de Saber to keep the Reginald statue's appendages when given the dialogue option to do so. Let me keep the stones. I'll pay you. Grant me this, I beg you. They... they've made me young again. No chance. Need to take the stones, pure and simple. But... But if you were to leave them with me for, for a day or two, uh, three at the most. Shit out of luck. Sorry. The third quest is named Till Death Do You Part. Located in Clever Clog's Tavern in Beauclair City, the required condition is to tell Charles Lanzano the truth about the noises being just a marital spat, when given the dialogue option to do so. One madman especially, always shouting, ordering, ordering. But tell me, at the cemetery, what was it? Beasts, as you claimed? Nope, just a marital spat. That's it? But they hollered like skewered polecats. <clears throat> Sorry to bother you with such a trifle. Here for your trouble. 
The fourth and final quest related to proving your honour is named the Warble of a Smitten Knight. Located at the Tawny Grounds, the required condition is to free Vivian from her curse or accept Anissa's challenge to mounted combat. Performing either one will prove your honour. Now, open your eyes. Damn, I think it might have worked. This third table shows the six quests related to proving your generosity. As usual, only a single quest in the list needs to have its conditions met to prove your worth. The first quest is named Where Children Toil, Toys Waste Away. Located at the Beauclair port, the required condition is to pay the kid Bootblack the coin he needs to improve his shoe shining business. Ah, see? I knew we'd clinch it! Fine. Guess I can agree to that. A thousand thanks! I shan't forget it! Now to the matter at hand. The second quest is named Beyond Hill and Dale. Located in the Fable Sphere Illusion, the required condition is to obtain Cyanna's ribbon from the little flint girl by paying for it or winning a game of Gwent. What if I asked you nicely? Ask me nicely and I might play you for it. A round of cards? The third quest is named A Portrait of the Witcher as an Old Man. Located in Beauclair City, the required condition is to purchase the painting for 1,000 crowns when given the dialogue option to do so. Perhaps you'd care to buy the painting. Given our rapport, I shall take a loss. For you, I'll part with it, I will, at a special price. The fourth quest is named Turn and Face the Strange. Located in Beauclair City, the required condition is to tip the messenger boy who gives you the letter from Yennefer. Sir! Sir! A letter for you, sir! Letter? Who from? Can't rightly say, sir. I was just to deliver it. Here. And thanks. No, sir. Thank you. And I truly hope I'll be off surface again. The fifth quest is named Equine Phantoms. Located at Pinastri's Hermitage, the required condition is to refuse to accept the reward offered by Pinastri when talking about your pay before beginning the quest. I've none of any coin. I've nothing, in fact. Just potatoes in the cellar. A good crop this year. Tend to this quickly, completely, and several sacks will be yours. Agreed? If that's the case, no pay required. Need those potatoes more than I do. The sixth and final quest related to proving your generosity is named Mutual of Beauclair's Wild Kingdom. Located in Venin Rocks, the required condition is to not kill Locust the Basilisk as well as refusing to accept the additional coin offered, instead giving it to the family of the dead merchants. That I shall do. Master, you must accept more, be it a symbolic sum. Had you not come along, the reefers would surely have slain my Yokast. Don't need any more. Rather you paid it out to the families of your pet's victims. Noble of you, master. I shall take the advice to heart. This fourth table details the ten quests related to proving your valour. As usual, only a single quest in the list needs to have its conditions met to prove your worth. The first quest is named The Knight of Long Fangs. Located in Beauclair City, the required condition is to save the tournament knights and Captain Damien from the vampire attack at the bank. Killed it single handedly. That harlot's brood slaughtered half my unit. I see the harlot's brood came close to slaughtering you as well. Need to withdraw, you and your men, now. 
My duty lies with the city. Won't help the city by leading your men to the slaughter. Damien, conversation back at the palace, remember? I'll say it again. Your men don't stand a chance. The second quest is named Tesham Mutna. Located at the Tesham Mutna ruins, the required condition is to defeat in battle the primary villain of the Blood and Wine expansion, Detlef van der Eretine. The third quest is named A Knight's Tales, located at Lynx Crag. The required condition is to defeat the Witch of Lynx Crag in battle. You have bested me. Tradition ordains I must grant you three wishes, it seems. You know exactly why I'm here. Very well. I will help you. The fourth quest is named A Portrait of the Witcher as an Old Man. Located in Dushaton Crest, the required condition is to defeat the Griffin in battle. Is it safe? Yeah, come on out. And no wonder no one ever came here. It was a Griffin's hunting ground. Oh, that thing scared me to death! The fifth quest is named the Warble of a Smitten Knight. Located at the Tawny Grounds, the required condition is to defeat the arena champion, Sir Gregoire de Gorgon, in battle. Gather to Frifia! This year's champion! A sight to behold! He defeated Gregoire de Gorgon! Hail Geralt! Herald! The sixth quest is named Equine Phantoms. Located at Mont Crane Cemetery, the required condition is to defeat the Umbra, the spirit of Marcello Clerici, in battle. Geralt! It's the Umbra! Attack! The seventh quest is named Bovine Blues. Located at the Fort Usar ruins, the required condition is to defeat both Slyzards, patrolling the skies of the ruins. <laughs> A trophy. The eighth quest is named Feet as Cold as Ice. Located at Grotor's Grotto, the required condition is to keep Francis de Goff alive during the fight with Grotor the Spriggan. <sighs> By my troth, the damned brute was sturdy. I, I'm grateful, Witcher. You ate at me greatly. The ninth quest is named Mutual of Beauclair's Wild Kingdom. Located at Venin Rocks, the required condition is to kill Locust the Basilisk when given the option to do so. A stroke like that to fight to the true witch's side. Prime the way you swung that razor, mate. Mention some fee from a guild. I hear you right. <laughs> Which you drives right for the gut. A professional, right thorough. Your share, friend. Every last copper as we agree. The tenth and final quest related to proving your valour is named the Tofu Monster. Located in Marcescent Forest, the required condition is to kill the Tofu Monster by summoning it in its underground lair. This fifth table shows the six quests related to the final fifth virtue of wisdom. The first quest is named the Beast of Toussaint. 
Located in Beauclair's Palace Gardens, the required condition is to solve the riddle of where Milton is hiding. Then investigate the greenhouse by yourself without the company of the Duchess. Let's see. Grown with ease gives us green, right? And mouse with the head of hard cheese. Greenhouse? You're a genius. The second quest is named La Cage or Fowl. Located at the Trustamara Estate Ruins, the required condition is to cure the White Spoon Collector from her curse, so she transforms back to Marlene. Open your eyes. You need to see your likeness. quest is named Father Knows Worst. Located at the Albertus Grotto Cave, the required condition is to help Hugo Monart, choosing the dialogue option, no one dies today, not today, and solve the situation peacefully without bloodshed. Well, perhaps not them, but the other roughs, for certain. As to my brothers, I don't know. You couldn't perhaps render them harmless? Uh, will you defend me? Not about to start cutting folk down because of a family squabble about some spare bit of machinery. We're going over there, and you're gonna settle this. Talk it out. But should they attack, you will protect me, will you not? If they attack, unprovoked. Let's go. The fourth quest is named A Knight's Tales. Located at the Dantan Glade Lumberjack Camp, the required condition is to humble yourself in front of the Witch of Link's Crag and properly save Daphne. I'll humble myself, prostrate myself before you like the Gareth of the Tale did. I beseech you to help me. Lift the curse that imprisoned Daphne in the tree. When I saw you enter my hut, I thought, now there is a fellow who shall bend his neck for no one. The fifth quest is named To Everything Turn Turn Tournament. Located at the Pheasantry Tavern in Beauclair, the required condition is to win the Gwent Tournament. You proved yourself a true Gwent Master. Here, the grand prize. You earned it. Thank you very much, Count. Thank you once more for deigning to take part in my little tournament. I hope we shall meet again. The sixth quest is named, but other than that, how did you enjoy the play? Located at the amphitheatre south of the palace gardens, the required condition is to light the candles in the correct order to summon the phantom. Now to drink. Once you've satisfied the conditions required to prove your worth for all five virtues, head back to the Hermit of the Lake and show him who's boss in a final showdown of combat ability. When fighting the Hermit, make sure to keep the combat at close distance, where the Hermit performs his least devastating attacks, as well as making regular use of Ard and Axie to stagger and stun him, opening up windows for quick and easy counter-attacks. Once the Hermit succumbs to your superior combat abilities, he descends into the lake itself, no longer burdened by his task. 
The Lady of the Lake then emerges from the water, releasing the fabled relic from its magical confinement. The Erendite is a unique silver sword in the relic category, and possesses a very powerful perk which increases damage by 10% with every successful strike. One charge is given for every successful light attack, and two charges for every successful heavy attack. This icon displays how many charges you've currently built up. If you can't see this icon, make sure to have your buff icons switched on in the HUD configuration options menu. If you manage to build up to and maintain the maximum charge of 10, the Aerondite will deal double damage as well as crit with every hit, dealing massive damage for as long as the max charge remains. Charges are lost one at a time every 25 seconds that pass without dealing damage. Or, when Geralt receives damage himself, multiple charges can be deducted. If you manage to kill an enemy while at the maximum charge of 10, the Aerondite base damage will be permanently increased by 2, and the charges will reset back to 0, allowing you to start the whole process again. Initially, you can only level up the base damage of the sword by a maximum of 10. This damage cap is indicated by the second figure here, displayed in the weapon description box. However, whenever Geralt gains a level, this damage cap will increase by a further 10 points per level. So for example, if you manage to level Geralt 10 levels higher since acquiring the sword, the Erendite's damage cap will be raised to 110. This works all the way up to Geralt's own level cap of 100. As you can see with my current Erendite, I've leveled Geralt once since acquiring the sword, hence the damage cap has been raised once by 10 points. I've also successfully killed an enemy 6 times while the sword had maximum charge, hence the base damage has increased by 12 points, as indicated by the first figure in the weapon description box. If you learned a thing or two from this video, please punch that thumbs up, and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more quality content from Gamer Grey. Every like and sub helps me tremendously, and will allow me to make more kick-ass videos in future. I'm Jay, peace out, and I'll see you in the next 